Hello, I'm Pauline from PQW and I'd love to welcome you to our YouTube channel and I'm going to show you how to make these fabulous fabric bowls. Aren't they just gorgeous? Look at them. You can make, once I show you how to do it, and I'm just going to go through step by step. Um, it's not a full lesson, it's just a technique class of showing you how to um, make these. You can make them out of a honey bun roll, you can make them out of your own fabric strips that you cut and I'll explain all of that to you as we go through. But you can make any shape, any size you wish. And these are great for gifts for people, they're, they're great home deck um, items to have around your house. If you do markets, they're great things that you can sell at markets. Just lovely, love them. But anyway, a honey bun, if you don't know what a honey bun is, this is a honey bun bundle. It's just like a jelly roll. We all know about jelly rolls. A jelly roll is normally a two and a half inch wide strip. A honey bun is an inch and a half wide strip. So it comes exactly the same as a jelly roll. And they're just beautiful the way they coordinate all the fabrics together. So a lot of the fabric companies now do make the honey buns. If you didn't want to use a honey bun, cut your strips of fabric an inch and a half wide. And that's what we've done with a couple of these bowls. We just used up fabric from our stash and cut strips an inch and a half wide. Now, in the bowls, I like to use the rainbow cotton batting. I just find this gives the, um, the bowls nice structure. They're nice and firm. They're not floppy. They don't flop down on you. This is cut... Um, to, to use with the jelly roll strip. So I, what I've done is I've cut this strip in half. The width of this, I just put it down and use my old rotary cutting blade and I cut it in half. So now you've got this thin strip of batting. Whether you use a honey bun roll or whether you cut your own strips, when you join the strips together, because you will need to join all the strips together, please join them on the 45 degree angle. You, you don't want to cut, join that straight across because it becomes too bulky when you start to put the bowl together. So join all your strips together um, on that angle. Then we're just going to simply roll it back into a ball. It's much easier to control if it's in a nice little roll. Then we're going to lay the batting strip on top of this. Now the batting will be a little bit narrower than your two and a half inch wide strip. So one and a quarter, for instance, but if it's a little bit narrower, it won't matter. But what we do is lay that down and then we're going to fold the sides in on both sides till they meet in the middle or thereabouts. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly in the middle. Use your iron and just press a couple of inches. That'll make it easy for you to start your project. Now, this is the pattern that we have for the bowls. So you can see we've made a big basket. We've made different size bowls. You can see some of the bowls here that I've got with me. In here, we give you all the instructions, step-by-step -step, colored photos. And then, you know, by watching the video and having the pattern, you'll be able to do any of this. We've got all different shapes for you to follow. So it's step-by-step. -step. So it'll make it very, very easy. It'll tell you on the back of the pattern all the other tools and bits and pieces you'll need. But many years ago, I designed the Sasha tools, the Sasha collection for folding fabric for any purpose, for bindings for the edge of the quilts, for sashings for your quilt as you go quilts, for making bias. So the Sasha tools um, come in all different sizes and shapes for all different purposes. When the honey buns become very popular, I decided to do the bowls, I'd need a tool to help me at the sewing machine. I don't want to have to stand at the ironing board for hours and fold my strip all the way through and press so that it folds it neatly like this. All I do is fold the first little bit, then I use the honey bun sasha tool. This is the tool I designed for doing exactly this. If you have my regular sashes, they won't work for this. The yellow fluoro sashes that I designed many years ago, they have a much narrower split than what this one has because the yellow fluoro ones are designed to put fabric through an iron, not fabric with batting. So because we've got the batting here, because we've folded it like such, we've got a double thickness of batting happening. So we need to fold this 
and we need to put it into the tool up and back down and this is what it's going to look like. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to start stitching but before we do that I want to show you the different feet that I recommend that you use for this process. So we're going to first of all, I'm just going to put this inside here, we're going to first of all use a selection of feet and you can make your choice of which is going to be the best but to start with I really recommend we use a quarter inch foot on our machine so a regular quarter inch foot if you've got the foot the quarter inch foot that has the guide down the side that is a perfect foot to use but I don't have one for this machine that I'm using so I'm just going to use the regular quarter inch foot so that's what I'm going to start stitching with but when we start constructing the bowls and we need to put them together we're going to use a zigzag stitch so I want to zigzag evenly across the two layers that I'm going to put together I find the best foot for that is the stitch in the ditch foot this foot here it has a little guide that comes down through the middle so I don't know if you can see that guide it comes down and pokes through the um, in the middle of the foot now you can buy these for all different brand machines. Um, this is for my Benina, but if you've got different brand machines, go to your dealer or have a look in your manual to get the right foot for your machine. It's well worth investing in. But if you don't have that foot and you have an open toe foot, use this foot because it will allow you to see where that ditch is, where the two pieces of fabric join together that you need to zigzag. And the aim of this is to get your zigzag even on both sides so that it catches both strips of fabrics. So that's why I find this foot is the best one to use for this technique. So let's take you to the machine now and get you started with your sewing because it's going to really excite you, I hope. So we'll come on over. So now at my machine, I don't know if you can see, but I always sew with a sew slip mat on the bed of my machine because I find pushing this through, particularly when we start doing the bowls, we're going to have a bit of bulk moving through and we want the bowl to slide nicely as we start to shape the sides up. So I just find having this sew slip mat on the bed of the machine, it has a sticky back to it. Um, when you put it on the machine, pull your bobbin thread up through. It has a cutout in it so you can have your feed dogs up. The feed dogs are up. Just pat it down because you don't want it to move as you stitch. Now we're going to put the quarter inch foot on the machine to start with. But as I said, if you've got the quarter inch foot with a little guide down the side, it is a much better foot to use. We'll come in close to the machine. Now, if this was a big roll that you had, I would suggest you put two baskets on the floor. Put your fabric roll in one and your batting roll in another so that they're down on the floor coming out evenly. We've got these all laid together. And I instantly have them all tangled, so that's why it's a good idea to put them in a bowl. Now we need to pull this little tool, which we call the honey bun tool, we need to pull it down about six inches. To, and it's, when we pull it down, it's going to fold the fabric for me. We're going to roll this in half. So the folded edge is out here, the raw edge is here. Put that under the machine and put your needle in the down position because you want the needle to stay down in the work to hold it in place. It doesn't want to go down. So pop the needle down. Now I use the titanium top stitch needles. Now they're by Superior. Um, I use them because they're a much stronger metal they don't go blunt because we're going to do a lot of sewing through this batting and a lot of thicknesses. I find that a lot of people when they do this sort of thing, the one complaint that they have is that their machine skips stitches. So use the titanium top stitch needle. They're a gold needle. They are absolutely wonderful. I never get skipped stitches. 
So now we've got that anchored under the needle of the machine. We're going to pull with this tool. Now that holds the fold in place for us perfect. And we're just going to roll this over and we're going to start stitching. So I'm keeping the edge of my foot on the edge of this fabric where I've folded it over. You may need to increase your stitch length up a bit. You may need to go up to from a 2.5 to a 3. Whatever um, your machine is going to cope best with, set it up. So pull this down. Now, if I wasn't using this tool, I would have had to iron all of these edges in. I would have either had to pin it or clip it all the way through, which takes a lot of time. But using the honey bun tool, it allows me to keep all that fabric folded nicely while I stitch. So we can come down a bit closer to that tool. And, and this can get quite boring. So this is where I suggest you put a good movie on or some boppy music and just stitch along to it. But as you can see, just line your batting up, fold in each side, pull down. But just make sure your needle's always in the down position because that will hold the tension on the fabric while you pull with the tool. So you'll just keep going along and stitching all of that till you get the whole lot done. In the pattern will tell you about how many strips you need to join together and stitch like this to make certain size bowls. So it's all there for you. So that's just the ease of stitching this. I call this the string, the batting string. And you can see how it's just stitching that beautifully for me. So the needle's penetrating through nicely. I'll show you the needles in a moment. So you continue on to get that whole um, amount of strips sewn like that that you need for the bowls. You know, and if you make too many and you've got some left over, just make some smaller bowls to sit on the coffee table and that. It's just wonderful to have that around. So now when you get it all done, I really strongly suggest you roll it into a ball. If you don't roll it up, you're going to have fabric string going everywhere. It'll be tangled up all under the foot of your machine, around your chair, you might trip on it. So roll it up into a ball. We're going to put the stitch in the ditch foot on the machine now, or your open toe foot, whichever one you have. Pop this one on. We're now going to set our machine on a nice zigzag. So I'll just go to my number two stitch, which is my, the zigzag I like. We may need to open the zigzag up a little bit. We may need to change the width and length. So you just need to do a little bit of adjusting here on your machine to you get it to the width and the length that you would like it. So now I'm just going to come back to my work table because I just want to show you a little trick of getting started with this to make it really, really easy. Because when we make the bowl, we need to start with a tight circle. Now, if I just go to my machine and try and hold this into a nice tight circle and zigzag as I stitch, I'm really going to keep running onto my fingers. So what you're best doing is I'm going to use the, um, what I always use, my Roxanne glue baster. I'm going to just Put some glue, oops, we'll get, go to this end. And we suggest all these things in the pattern to you so that you can remember that. Put little dots of glue along this for a few inches. Then roll this into a tight ball. So we're just gonna put it down. Now the best thing you do here is as you roll it, get your iron and press because this will, the iron will set the glue for you. It'll set it up for you. So just keep gluing. Oops, my glue's popping because I didn't get enough heat in there. So as you do it, you might like to use some pins. And I don't know that I've got any pins here with me, but we'll just check in my drawer. Yes, I do. So just pin into your ironing board because we just need to get that glue to set. 
because it's well worth doing this at your ironing board before you start stitching because it is going to make the first part of your stitching so much easier. So we'll just keep gluing along here. And I'll just glue a couple of rounds, but you're getting the idea of how that's done. Glue it, press it, and while that's just setting, I'll just explain about the needles for you and show you the needles. I'll just do a little bit more. Put another couple of pins in and then it can set while we explain a few more things. Show some more pins. There we go. And it, it truly is well worth doing this. Oops, no, I've ran out of pins. So I would possibly glue one more round. Then that's going to allow me to get my, I'm not going to have to have my fingers in under the foot of the machine and, and run the risk of running the needle through my fingers. But these are the needles that I suggest you use. The titanium coated superior top stitch needles. They're a size 8012. They've got a very, very big eye. And I'm using a nice fine thread because I don't want the thread to show up too much, but having the big eye, the fine thread runs through it beautifully and it won't split. And I shouldn't get any skip stitches using a much stronger needle. I actually use these needles to do my quilting, my applique, if I'm going to sew through stretch fabric like my top, I use the one needle to do absolutely everything. And I probably think that needle that's in my machine's probably been there probably for 100 hours of stitching. So I'm getting lots and lots of um, good quality time out of the one needle. Where out of our nickel plated needles, I probably get probably eight to 10 hours of stitching, then I've got to change the needle. So that's my recommendation of needles. So let's take this out. Now, all we're going to do is go now to our machine and we're going to start zigzagging this. So I'm going to start working on this one. Then I've got another bowl half way, which I'm going to stitch it in a minute, in a moment because I want to show you how to start bringing up the edges of your bowl. So we have our machine set up with our zigzag. Once again, have a bowl or something to put this in because it's going to run everywhere if you don't. So we'll come into the middle. We're going to put that groove of that foot right in so the, that little ledge that's on that foot is sitting between the two layers of fabrics, right in the groove. And that will give me an even zigzag, catching both sides of the fabric. So we're going to stitch around here. And just take it slow to get started. You might have to lift your foot and come around the curves. So you'll keep going around you get out a bit further and my zigzag is much too close so I need to open it up a lot. So it's just very slow and tedious at this first little bit and then it gets much better as we get out and around. So I'm going to switch to the other one now so that you can see um, as we work out what's going to happen. So we'll take that one out from under there. And you may be able to see the stitching here. My zigzag is just still a little bit too closed up. So I need to adjust that a little bit more to make it more open. Um, make the length wider. and that will adjust it up to where I need to be. But this is one that we've already started and you can see how we've started and we've stitched all the way around. Now I want to do a little bit more and then I want to start to show you how to build up the side so you can get the side of your bowl happening. And it depends how quickly you want to come up, how deep do you want that bowl to be, how sloped do you want it to be and it might take a little bit of experimenting to start with, but you'll you'll soon get the gist of it. That's better zigzag. So that 
that guide is sitting right in between those two layers. So I don't know if you can catch that there. There is my guide right there. There's the piece of fabric there and a piece of fabric there. I just pull them together and the guide sits in the middle. So don't watch your needle as you stitch, watch your guide because it's going to take you exactly down through the middle. And keep my eye on that. Now one of the problems that can happen when you're making these bowls is that you can stretch the fabric. You can stretch this part here. So just let it glide through your fingers. You don't want to um, stretch it. So you can see how I can do this one hand's on the bowl just curving it as I go. The slippery mat is helping it slide. This is just running through my, between my finger and thumb. Now I want to start going up, so I'm going to start lifting up the side. And in a moment you'll see how this has all started to, started to lift up at the sides. So my fabric's twisted, have to untwist that. And every now and again, you may just have to realign to get out a bit further because on this curve, that little guide can have a few challenges coming around. But if you can't use that foot, I'm going to change to the other foot just so you can see how it works and operates. So we're going to put the open toe foot on now. Just so you can see the difference. Oops. Oh, it doesn't want to go on. There you go. Now, I don't know if you can see here, but my bowl has already started taking shape because just simply holding it up like I was, it starts to push it out to the sides. So we'll pull this thread back a bit. I'm back to where I was. Stopped. Now, using this foot, I've got nothing to keep me right so that the zigzag is even on both sides, and I find it a little bit more challenging. So, notice how I'm holding the side up. Now, if we come up really tight to start with, our bowl's going to go from a little base and it'll go up like a funnel. So, if you want it to be a gentle curve, just hold it slightly up and as you come around and get it the bowl larger you can start holding it up closer to the machine and that's as simple as it is it is so simple to do you know and if you've got a friend having a birthday or something make a bowl out of your fabric scraps and fill it with chocolates she'd love it she'd absolutely love it or he might like it whoever Grandchildren love them. I've made these for my grandchildren and filled them up with all sorts of things. And, and they have their bowls sitting in their room and they use them for all sorts of decorating ideas. So we'll just do a little bit more. And it does twist, so you'll have to stop and keep untwisting it. But I just think they're so much fun to make. But remember, please don't stretch this string as you sew. And it's basically the same way as making a jelly roll rug. Don't stretch your string as you sew it together. So this is only going to be a small bowl because I haven't got a lot of fabric here. But it'll just give you the idea. Now I'm holding it up closer to the machine bed. And you can get quite fast at this. And we'd love to see, if you make some of these bowls, we'd love you to send us some photos because we love to see what people make. We love showing you how to do this, but it's even we get more joy when we see that you've actually achieved something and made something. I've just got a little bit more to go and then we'll...
know, and you can make big shopping baskets like this, bags, you can make all sorts of things. Have a look at the different patterns on our website because we've got, you know, other patterns for bags and everything using the honey bun um, sasha tool and the one and a half inch wide strips. So now because I've come out a lot further, I am ran off there a bit, so I just need to go back over. And if I had kept that other stitch in the ditch foot on, I wouldn't have ran off there because I would have had that guide to keep me aligned. So you can probably see this bowl now taking really nice shape. And it is a fabulous way of using up all your scraps. Then when we finish, we're just going to angle it down. Now you can finish it off by making a loop here if you wish to. Whoops. I just need to, it's not going to work because I need to trim off the end. But if I need to finish this off now, I start angling it in. But you're going to see what's happened here and what you will need to do before you start doing all of this. So we'll go back to my work table and we'll have a look at this bowl. So here's our lovely little bowl made. So you can appreciate if I had a lot more fabric here, I could keep going out and out and out and making it into any shape bowl I want. It's not hard. It is so much fun. And you can see here that this is more of a not such a deep slope on this one, so I didn't hold it up too high. I just kept it at a gentle angle. But this end here, this can get quite messy. So I want to show you, and I've left this till the end, but it's taking you right back to the beginning. Because when we're preparing our fabric to put into the tool, let me just cut this off nice and neat here. What we need to do is have your batting about half an inch away from the top and we need to fold this in, fold in about half an inch and then in and in and then press that. Now that will make your beginning very very neat. So when you're when you're sewing your whole um, strips together when you get to the other end before you finish stitching at the other end stop about two inches away from the end when you're stitching it into your ball into this one stop about two inches and do the same thing at the other end fold the end in so that you've got a neat finish so you don't end up with this lump of batting sticking out at the other end like here we twisted it as we came around and we've got the little hook on it so we can hang these up in the kitchen or in the bedroom or you can make them as a nice display on the wall as home decorating. But that's just a little bit about how we make all of our fabric bowls. You know, there's been rope bowls out for years where you wrap the, your fabric around the rope. We just found this is another way of doing them and it makes it so easy. I don't suggest doing um, these out of the jelly roll strips because I find that it's too wide. The half inch strip, when it's finished, makes the bowls go too chunky. That's why we like to do them out of the one and a half inch wide strip. So hope you've enjoyed that. Remember, you need the honey bun sasha tool to make it very easy at your sewing machine. We have the pattern that shows you everything and the batting. And don't forget, to use the titanium coated needles because that will make it so much easier and there's no skip stitches whatsoever. It just gives you a really, really lovely finish. But remember, you can use those for everything. 
So have a look at all of our other YouTube um, videos because we've got some amazing ones out there for you. See how to make the jelly roll bag that we've made. It's great. It's fabulous. Um, and the honey bun bag, there's, we've got lots of things there for you. So we'd love you to subscribe to our YouTube channel by pushing down on that bell because you'll get a notification every time we put a new video up for you. And subscribe to our website, to our newsletter, www.pqw.com.au. And have a look around our website because we've got some amazing tools there that we've designed specially for you. So till next time, happy stitching. Bye for now.